Okay, so I just wanted to share with you, hello and welcome to the channel by the way, I'm John Cordy, um, things are back, I will talk about it a bit further, but if you Google that, uh, you'll see that this is a thing that's happened to quite a lot of YouTube accounts for whatever reason, uh, I don't quite want to do a proper video about it yet because I don't want to get retargeted, I don't know if that might be a thing, I might just be being paranoid, anyway, right, thank you everyone for resubscribing and stuff and leaving you know, comments just to say whatever. Uh, hopefully, like this feels like quite an important part of my day now. I've heard from a few of you um, that you do yoga whilst watching these, which is not something I approve of or recommend. But you know, if you're doing it, be safe. Yeah. So I do get asked quite a lot of the time about how I put together my backing tracks. People occasionally like say cool composition or you know writing and things like this. So. I wanted to do a little video kind of clearing up some of my process a bit. So the first thing to say is that all that happens before I start filming video, and I'll probably put in a little clip here, is that I open Reaper. That's the digital audio workstation that I use. I do really recommend it because it's great and doesn't cost a bomb. I think they even suggest that you can use it free if you're not using it for commercial uses, but ramble. So I use that and then I have my whatever modeler I'm using at the time or amp plugged into the interface and I set a click going and the camera recording. So that's kind of step one. And generally, that's all that I have planned beforehand. So I might have the click at like 147 is one of my favorite kind of BPMs for some reason. I think maybe something to do with Hitman. Um, so I'll set it going, then I might sit down. Sometimes I'll have an idea, like it might be a progression from a tune that's kind of in my head from someone else. Generally, it might be something like that. If it is something that's not fully improvised, it might be like a, uh, a groove from a tune that I've recently heard and was digging or you know it might be something like right I'm going to try and play it simply the best today or whatever um then the other thing is it might just be random so you know then I start the click going and what you see is uh kind of I layer I do like a looping thing without a looper if that makes sense so you've got your click going and I'm counting where the bars are going so I might be etc like that and you join it back up so when I come to the DAW I kind of snip at the four bar sections and layer them over each other that's what you see that's the start of the video that's creating the the loop part that I will then play over again if that makes sense so that's kind of stage one that is kind of the same thing that I would do with a looper the thing is though I can stop the camera recording and I can go back to my digital audio workstation and this is a thing that I kind of learned from Misha Mansour, uh, who used to talk about workflow and stuff. And I think some Misha's process is something like he would record at all times of the day or at all times of night and stuff and be inspired to just write music, I guess. So he talked about having a template kind of there. So what I have in Reaper is the drums. I have kind of like two, I use native instruments contact studio drummer and I have kind of like a, a setup that I've put together that I quite like the sound of I don't really um, consider myself good at production or mixing or anything this is just my process I, I wouldn't want to do like a video recommending how to do any of this I'm just telling you that this is kind of my process so I have a, a template where I have uh, two instances of studio studio drummer um, one with I think some more room sounds and a bit more compression so sort of parallel compressed sort of one so you've got like two instances of the same drum track so and then i think they both go into like a a, a bit of a room reverb bus then what happens is i program in a drum beat so this is kind of a written part of what i'm doing and then i use uh, native instruments uh reactor and then monarch is generally the bass program that I would use for that like synth based stuff and programming that then I come back 
and I do the lead stuff. And I might then have a few goes at it, depending on, so yesterday I did, I think, four or five takes. So I'll put these at the end of the video. So oftentimes you might be seeing the first or second take. So I might have false starts where I trip over the stool or something, or where just my fingers aren't working quite how I want. So you might have like one or two takes, depending on also how hard the progression ends up being that I'm playing over, or if I'm thinking, well, that sounded like trash. Or depending, I guess, also on how inspired I am by whatever instrument or model I'm playing. So I'll share those other takes at the end here of the video. If you want to click to those, you can. Um, you'll see at the end of a couple of them, there's like a mistake, which is what? Not a mistake. So there's lots of mistakes throughout this, but there's something that I wouldn't put up with, like I fell off the rails. <laughs> That happens, I think, to, to most guitarists. It may happen to people more than they present as well. Um, that's something you should be aware of if you're interested in improvisation and real guitar playing. I think there's some element of this social media or YouTube stuff, the curated stuff, where obviously you're not seeing someone upload kind of the bloopers, the fails, all that stuff, which I think can make things look completely unattainable if you just see that tiny snippet of the success, possibly. Anyway, so yeah, as I say, I set the, the camera recording, then I have a take over that. And that's basically how you see things, how I create these videos. Um, then basically you have the, I might do an overdub of a harmony or an overdub of like a, a lead line an octave above that's a thing that I often kind of do because it kind of just elevates that particular line. What else then? So then what happens is I go and I use DaVinci Resolve is the editing program that I use. Once I've kind of put that stuff together in Reaper and I have like a, a master bus template as well that I use, which has like compression and uh, limiting and all that stuff on it. Um, again, I'm not really qualified to talk about that because I'm, I'm not a mixer or producer really, but that's what I do there. And then basically in DaVinci, I match these things up. Um, so, you know, like the clean section with the looping kind of goes for that first section. And then I drag in the next part, which might be the, the solo. Um, and that's kind of how that works. So hopefully, I don't know if that was the kind of insight that you care about, but a few people have asked about this over the years. Um, and that's basically the process. Um, and then for this part, I kind of talk to a camera with a microphone. Uh, let me know if that was at all interesting. Let me know if you have any other questions that I've totally missed here. There may be some, I guess I sometimes use native instruments to kind of add in other instruments, or I might do like little production things here and there. Like for instance, one thing that is a secret, so don't tell anyone about this, the shimmery kind of synth tones you hear in my videos. Those are also guitar, don't tell anyone this, but you want to basically set up a new bus and you set the pitch up an octave and a reverb kind of on it. And that can become like a shimmer bus. So that can sound like, because the way guitar sounds when it's pitched up, it's kind of synthy. So there's a um, little trick for you. Please, if, if you want to help the channel get back to its former mediocrity, you could like, you could subscribe, you could maybe share this video to someone or share another video. If you know someone who's got an HX stomp who hasn't been troubled by my videos, you could say, look, this is John Cordy, he's an awkward knobhead. Um, but yeah, thank you again. And the presets that I was using here, by the way, the first one, the clean, like acoustic -y one is ABBA dot dot out there, which is based on like the Abbasi thing. And then Eric Lead is the, the main lead tone which you can get those in the description as well if you want to buy me a coffee. Or well, you might have already done that. Cheers.
Thank you.